of you survived. Why did you come back? For you. Hey, what's going on out there, YouTube fam? This is Sammy Leggett here representing Team JVS, back here again for another TV show review. This is coming straight off of premiering at South by Southwest 2022. I'm talking about DC Comics adaptation format. It's gonna be on HBO Max, DMZ. So the DMZ is starring Rosario Dawson, um, Benjamin Bratt, uh, Han Lee, um, a newcomer in Jordan Preston Carter, who does an amazing job. And also Freddy uh, Mares, who plays the role of S Scale. Um, so the background premise is you have hey. Alma. Alma is, uh, she's a jack of many trades, but I don't want to spoil too much about this. But let's just say she has a stake in the game when it comes to the DMZ. She's looking for somebody in the DMZ that is in and of itself is surrounded by a war a civil war in the United States that's going on on the outside. But on the inside of DMZ, they're kind of independent to their own, but they're left in a lawless situation where different, you know, different groups are kind of sanctioned amongst the city. And this is all in the backdrop of New York as well. Um, and she finds a way in to try to look for this set person. But she understands very quickly that she may not be able to just get out, get in and get out as soon as she wants to. So Zaria Dawson, first off, is Alma or Z. I think she does a phenomenal job. She, from an acting standpoint, she carries a lot of heavy weighted uh, emotional turmoil with the, the person that she's trying to find, why she's trying to find them, her history with the DMZ, why all these different things are going on. She is amazing. Like, all her scenes, like, she really nails very well. I think Benjamin Pratt as well um, as Parco, like, he is menacing, but yet you understand and empathize and sympathize with him at times when you really shouldn't. Han Lee, same way as Wilson, I think that he does an amazing job. Like, he, he really seems like he's just embracing this role uh, in a way that I hadn't seen him in a long time. But the huge standout, honestly, and I want to make sure I get his last name right, I'm going to spell it, is Freddie... M I Y A R E S Mares as scroll like he he kills it. He should immediately get picked up by DC or Marvel in some capacity from a superhero standpoint because he can play both. He can play the villain or the hero. Physicality wise, he's got it. But there's something about somebody just immersing themselves into like a specific character and he owns like the first two episodes of this this is his world like i mean rosario Austin just kind of exists but he he is killing the game with how he is portraying this specific character because he's very multi-layered very sick but at the same time very empathetic much like the character of parko that benjamin pratt's uh playing as well um jordan preston carter as Odie, he does an amazing job as well and, and I'm, I'm talking about all the things I really liked about the DMZ. So I want to go ahead and start that off with that. But the thing about Jordan is he is almost like the heart and soul. Like whatever is left of innocence in the DMZ, that is him. And even he has some things going on that you don't realize until probably the beginning of the, sorry, the ending of the first episode, the beginning of the second episode. Um, that's very tragic, very, very intriguing as well. Such a lovable character, um, but very uh, specific. Like he's not a pushover. Nobody in the DMZ, honestly, is a pushover, including Zara Dawson. Um, I think the backdrop is really awesome. Like the different set pieces and the way that they have all the different groups backlog. Like it, it really does feel like a apocalypse situation in the in the New York and how they're just choosing to take ownership of how things can work. Um, there's definitely some DC nods for certain things when it starts to get like kind of a horror kind of level. Um, also some some sick deaths and things that are going on. Like there's a, there's a lot of, uh, this is rated R. Like this is very immature. The violence is there. Action is there. Um, there's a dope uh, fight sequence that happens with some warring gangs later on as the season progress. Um, but again, Freddie, like all his stunt choreography, like he, it seems like he's doing it all as well as Benjamin. And I think that Rosario Dawson as well. It's just, this is where we start going to things I don't like about the DMC. 
The DMZ is only four episodes. It's a miniseries. And my idea of a miniseries is at least six to, to eight episodes. But this is only four episodes. And I think that this is coming off of, again, this is a comic book. This is an adaptation. The adaptation is, uh, I think the, the original book series is like 72 issues. And I'm not going to say they did what Avatar did, but it's, it's not that bad. But you can tell that they go from point A to point B to point C and it 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 it, it kind of pulls apart certain specific characters, namely Z or Alma or Zaria Dawson's character, because she she moves very quickly. <laughs> like physically she she's she's all over the place, literally. But the moves that she makes strategically and doing certain things are just so unbelievable because this is being rushed and paced along so quickly. To the point that you don't get to rest with some of the characters. Now, if this was... The biggest fault to this show is that they made it condensed in four episodes. Honestly. That's that's really the big fault. Like, if this should have been one, either one open-ended, like six episodes tops, and kind of left it on a, a note. I get why they did, because something similar happened to Why the Last Man, where it kind of ended abruptly, and it's not going to continue in any way, shape, or form. But... The fact is, this is the own licensed characters from DC by Warner Brothers. And this is only four episodes. And I think this is it. When you get to the end, you're kind of going to be like, well, they could, but but really no. And I think that because they rushed the pacing of it, it, it deteriorates some of the, the values and the heart behind. Because a lot of this, the DMZ, is a surrounding family. And understanding what does it take to survive as much as it had to take to keep your soul and along the way with the pacing being pushed so quickly the narrative just doesn't make sense at times like certain characters make quick rash decisions like oh, okay i can see where this would have come down the line but no like they they don't even like give time to think about it like it's just already going to the next thing like well, some episodes feel like two to three episodes in one and I'm not just saying that, like, the episodes are long. Like, no, like, the content of what's going on and substance of what's going on in each of these episodes feel like it could have been spread out into two, at least, episodes each. So that could have been eight episodes. And I think if with a little bit of room to breathe, they could have had some really um, immersive character moments that could have benefited a lot with every character, even down to Jordan. Like, as much as Jordan got a really good amount of screen time there were some moments that i wanted some character moments with him with one of his friends that's kind of just helping him out with certain things or uh conversations that he has with z um same thing with honestly benjamin brad like benjamin brad like does an amazing performance in this but the way that they push it so fast like his decisions make sense because of the character but they're done so quickly it's it's, it's kind of like it's taken out of context. Like, why did he do this so quickly? You know, it felt like he's doing this quickly to progress the story. Same thing for the character Wilson that uh, Han Lee does. Like, there's a certain point where his character changes just like that. And you're just like, are they doing this because of the plot? Or is this, how does, again, and I think that's where the show, it really, it really catches you off guard. So I just want to make sure you guys are, um, up to date on what how this is gonna go but do know that it is very entertaining very good great great cinematography great gunplay some of the scores like even some of the way that each episode ends it ends on a very serious note most of the time um very character driven at times but i'd have to rest this at a seven out of ten i really honestly i if if it was paced better and it was drawn out a little bit better I would easily give this a 9 to a 10 out of 10. Like, I really did enjoy the moments. When it was hitting, it was hitting. But because it, it pushes you so quickly, like, some moments, the editing is even kind of off. You're like, wait, how did this character get from here to here? And then also, why is the narrative on this character changed so quickly and abruptly? And I think that is the thing that hurts and hinders the DMZ more than anything. But even with all that, I still rested at a 7 out of 10. Definitely go and check out the DMZ. It comes out, again, HBO Max on March the 17th. Highly recommend you go and check it out. Very great cast, very great work from Rosario Dawson and Freddie. And um, 
We'll talk more about it maybe a little bit later on. Keep it locked. JVS, we ain't going to stop. Make sure you like, subscribe, hit that bell button. If you want more content from South by Southwest 2022, you know where to get it. Peace, guys. Ain't nothing on